Welcome back to the channel, lads and ladies, and welcome to the event. So we've just received our first crate, uh, we'll call it our first defective aircraft. <laughs> so now Gaijin has given us the honor of fixing the damage model and the flight model of their vehicles themselves. <laughs> it's the perfect solution. We'll, we'll do a better job than they did. <laughs> So let's crack this thing open and see what we get. We are going to get a damaged I-105. Is that what it's called? You can see the thing there. I don't have the resolution on my screen to, to remember what it is. Already, already proving my I-180. That's what it says. So we have our damaged I-180, and I'm just trying to think about what to do with this thing. And uh, maybe I was also going and getting a baby a bottle. We'll have to see. <laughs> so you got to think for a while about how to properly handle this one. Okay, yeah, we were definitely getting the baby a bottle there. That was about one and a half minutes. Not bad considering the baby bottle takes a minute to warm up in the microwave. So I'm pretty good. But let's see how good I am as an aircraft maintenance technician. Okay, here's our aircraft. There's our list of possible defects. We can take a look at that after we do our little test flight. So uh, come on, Toshio. Click the button. Off we go. Diagnostic test flight. I'm excited. This honestly looks like it's a lot more engaging than the Build-A-Bear events we've had in the past. Uh, press the space bar to skip the needless reminder that we're here to fix an aircraft. Okay, the engine runs. The uh, rudder obviously has seen better days. Firing the guns works. Uh, we start to take off and there's a cloud behind us. Uh, a sort of ethereal, lighter in color cloud. Is that coolant or is that fuel? Well, I think we'll find out eventually if the engine starts wheezing and whining and choking and dying, then that's probably an overheating thing. And if it just sputters and then goes out, well, we're out of fuel. But issues have been identified already. Uh, the landing gear exists. That's nice. Already better than the ME262A1 U4 Narwhal. Uh, the guns! Does something look a little bit off to you? By the way, I love that it has four guns mounted in the engine, cowling up above the engine, right in direct line of sight of the pilot. That is very wise. USSR, you've chosen wisely. However, I see that three of the four guns are working, meaning one of them is defective and the engine has died. That's going to be a fuel flow issue, so either there is no fuel, or it's f uh, being that it's flowing out of the aircraft, or it's just not getting to the engine. So we'll have to see if fuel pump is an option on this one. <laughs> Extend the flaps. That works. Trying to retract them doesn't work when the engine is dead, so that would mean the hydraulic system dies along with the engine, surprising no one. Try to kick her back into life. She sputters and dies, sputters and dies. We're just not going to be able to make it off the runway right now. Looking around the aircraft for other possible defects, ailerons look to be working okay. Uh, they don't seem to be damaged either on visual inspection. Looking at the uh, front end of the tail, that being the vertical, nope, vertical? Vertical stabilizer appears to be damaged as well. So here's some of our options, and I see a big wall of choices. And I'm just looking around, seeing what the possible things could be. I'll go ahead and skip to our second test flight where we start getting some answers. Alrighty, we're back in the test, the diagnostic test flight. And we decide to take her off the ground right away because we know that our time is limited on account of fuel. The rudder is damaged, but we'll see what we can do with her. Take her off the ground, now we can check if the landing gear retract properly, and they do. Always nice to see, so we can check that off the list. We've perused our selection of things that could be broken, and now we're just individually checking things just to get a really good idea of what's going on. Another thing about this aircraft is it seems to have very good low-range acceleration, 
again, surprising no one. The flaps, not bad, not bad. Landing position, and we're going an unknown amount of miles per hour, but they do start to warn us there pretty soon, so that's going to be something to keep in mind when you're actually using this aircraft. Go to land, and the brakes are squealing nicely. Go into cockpit view, and we nose into the ground. Now, normally this wouldn't be an issue, but apparently in this test flight, you have enough damage that you don't get a repair on the airfield, or maybe you just don't get a repair in this mode, which would make complete sense, right? I found a way to cheat the system! <laughs> it only took 35 seconds, and I have the eye! <laughs> 180 <laughs> So looking at the cockpit now It appears that two of our four little lights are not turned on So could that be an electrical equipment issue? You see those two red lights on top are not turned on and I think they're supposed to be but I don't know I don't speak the Soviet so <laughs> I did see a little indicator for them so I'm scoping them out and the beautiful Corinthian leather in the cockpit very nice and then we look at the stabilizer there and the stabilizer on that side definitely shows signs of damage the other view of the aircraft just beautiful gorgeous cockpit model by the way so really enjoying that and now Another final visual inspection of the aircraft. I have a pretty good idea of what's broken, but I'm going to look at my options before I make any judgments. So this will be much like the IS-7 event when it came to guessing the recipes for the parts. Here you have a list of uh, six groups of five answers, and it's going to be a guess and check multiple choice. So the top one definitely not because our flaps are actually good the second one okay stabilizer horizontal stabilizer that's true that's actually broken um and then fuel yes that's defective rudder yes defective guns yes defective not sure about the electrical equipment you see there it shows the red and the green on at the same time so i'm just going to mark this next one false the first one and then consider, do a little bit of think thunk, and now I'm going to compare. Does anything else have the rudder listed as defective? And the next option does, but it also lists the engine cowling, which was fine, and the overall fuselage covering, which was for the most part fine. So we're going to go ahead and mark this one as the correct answer. Yes, final answer, Regis. Are we a millionaire? Processing. Well, of course you are, Regis. Just play the dramatic music da -da 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 -da, and tell me I have won big monies. In fact, I need to wait 15 seconds for an answer, and I believe that's just so you can't spam answers to get uh, the solution. They want you to engage with this test flight diagnostic mode, and I had a lot of fun. You saw us looking at the things, and it was fairly obvious what was damaged. You do need to check those blinking lights in, in the cockpit with cockpit view to see if those are broken, but other than that, pretty simple. We've gotten our answers, and now it's time to disassemble our aircraft. We will get unique parts, and we'll spend some kits to get those we got a pack of 10 parts and now we disassemble the aircraft this will give us key components to build a fully functional aircraft so we will be receiving more defective aircraft and more kits as we go along and test flight each one of those i honestly had a great time with this one and it's nice to see how this actually works you can hit me up on the discord to ask me specific questions or to chat with me. I'll try and be active there. Uh, but again, I got two girls right now and I need to take care of them as well. So apologies if I am not available at any given moment. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching and have fun with this event. I honestly think it's going to be the most fun event we've ever had. And the grind is going to be pretty considerable, but there is a fun little engaging factor there where you feel like you can use your smarts to get an advantage outside of combat and i think that is a great refinement of what we've seen so far could this be the best event that war thunder has done so far when it comes to how it actually plays when it comes excuse me to how it actually plays 
I think it really is. It gives you the freedom to play what you want, and there's an engaging and fun little minigame worked into it. And when it comes down to the grind, I still think that it's a bit too much grind for all the vehicles. I think they would have been better just having three or four vehicles on offer and or giving us twice the amount of time. I really would prefer twice the amount of time. But that's just me. I understand why they did it the way they did it. Uh, they're not going to make money off of it if everybody feels like they have all the time in the world to unlock things for free. So it is what it is. Anyway, guys, catch you later. Bye-bye.